Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an advanced breakdown of the Tiny Hawk 2 board here. I find it pretty interesting. So if somebody finds it interesting, you could go ahead and follow along here. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now, if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. So first of all, let's take a look at the board. Now this board has a lot of things connected to it. It's just basically everything you need in a quadcopter. You have your video transmitter, your flight control, your on-screen display, your ESCs, and your flight controller and the power distribution board all into one board here. Now here, this is going to be the bottom side. So let me just go ahead and write that down. This is the bottom and this is the top view. So here's the top. So up top, what we have is that we have the video transmitter and the way this is connected is actually pretty interesting. Uh, this is actually levitated off the board and it has these pins that are connecting right here. We see you have five volt, we have ground and one of these is going to be video and the other one's going to be like smart audio or something. And this is the bottom side where those pins are actually uh, going through right there. So that in itself is really crazy. But the craziest part comes down to the ESCs actually. So the ESCs, I'm guessing this is a BB2 chip. It looks like a BB2 chip here. So it is obviously BL Heli S. But what we don't find on this is there is no MOSFET driver. There's no FET driver like every other ESC we've seen. And it's pretty interesting here. All we have are we have uh, the six. Well, actually, we have three FETs, but they're a dual FET. So they have basically two FETs in each FET here because for each motor wire, you need two MOSFETs. So we have this design and these are so freaking tiny. It's insane. So the repairability is pretty simple. If you're going to be able to find the uh, these correct FETs, maybe if you talk to Emacs, they'll probably let you know. That's when you, you have a motor stuttering. The, the only real thing that could possibly be damaged or more likely to be damaged would be one of the FETs here. Unlikely to be one of the resistors connected with the gates or anything. So you'd be able just to quickly pop one off and put it in. Uh, but you're going to have to replace all three of them because you wouldn't know exactly which one is the bad one. Unless I make a video on that possibly. But yeah, that, that's something really interesting here. Now, some things I don't like about this board is, for example, the way that the receiver's antenna is connected. This is the receiver antenna right here. So we could just say RX. That's the receiver antenna. And we see it's connected to two points. Now, when you if you have ever stripped one of these, the first part you'll find is the, uh, the shielding wire, which is going to be ground. And that's where you see that soldered in. Then there's another plastic tube inside the ground. And then in that plastic tube, there's another wire, which is the, basically the signal wire. And uh, you'll have to cut this tube very gently and extract this super thin wire and solder it right there. And that's how you'd replace the RX uh, receiver's antenna if you break it. Now, I wish they would have used an IPEX port here. It would have been so much better because I did break my antenna. And uh, this, this, would be even, this would be a nightmare even for me to set up. I mean, you got some pretty close components there, but I don't have a problem with that. It's the problem of stripping these wires well, that's going to be very difficult. So if you do end up breaking one, I recommend you buy five of them because... Even for me, stripping them could be very hard. Uh, so just take that into consideration when purchasing this or if you're ever going to need to fix it instead of throwing it away because it's still a very good board here. Now, another thing to take into consideration here, if just a FET goes out, then try to replace it because everything on here is still pretty good unless you want to salvage it for another day and... Um, Make your own flight controller from my open hardware flight controller, maybe. So here what we see also on this side, we have the receiver section. This is the RF chip right here for the uh, S-Bus receiver that's inside. And uh, here we have the BB2 chips. These are the microcontroller units in charge of the ESCs here. And these are the FETs right there. We can see more of them, these right here. These are the FETs that are in charge of the power delivery down to your motor and controlling which phase goes on and which phase goes off. So it's a really nice design, but... I wish they would have used slightly larger FETs uh, because this would allow you to use this board for other things. But it doesn't have anything super unique than any other all-in-one boards, in my opinion. Actually, it's pretty low-powered or you wouldn't want to use this with a high-power application. That's why it's rated up to 2S maximum. And um, turtle mode is a no-no. Try to avoid turtle mode as much as possible because the, li the likelihood of you burning one of these FETs is very, very high. 
So that's something I would truly avoid. And we can see they've also added a low ESR capacitor here. I like how they've done it and they've routed it away. They have this plastic tube shielding covering the, uh, the, the what is it called? The pins coming out of the uh, capacitor here so they don't short out. So that's a nice little touch that I saw, which I, I kind of like, so it doesn't stick out anywhere. And it, usually it's in this area right here and it's levitated as high as uh, that board here. So it's not taking any extra room. And I'm also guessing this area right here, you can add your own receiver, S bus receiver to be exact. So this would be an inverted S bus since we have an F4 here. So yeah, take that into consideration. But I really do find this board pretty intriguing and I really like it. There's a lot of little uh, pinouts everywhere here and there. Here we have an RX1, here we have a 5 volt somewhere. I think it's 5 volt LED, TX2, RX2, TX1. We could probably use for something else if you ever needed to. I wish to see the V2 to have bigger FETs or maybe more FETs, uh, but that means they're gonna have to incorporate a FET driver. So these boards might, might have to get a little bit bigger here. Or possibly, I would personally recommend is to remove the receiver uh, from inside. You could, you could free up a lot of space and use that to concentrate more on the ESCs because, you know, the, the main thing that breaks on these are the ESCs. Usually on all these all-in-one boards, especially with these super, you have no idea how tiny these FETs are. And um, I would definitely try to avoid putting the RX next time. And I would put uh, just just really concentrate more, give more priority to the MOSFETs than anything else or the ESCs than anything else on this. And uh, it should give you a better, longer lasting board that could handle more output because uh, that the Emacs isn't that efficient. So it is very power hungry. Uh, well, at least not the two, the, the previous ones. Uh, but that will give you more sustained power delivery and less chance of you ruining an ESC because usually most of these boards get thrown out because of an ESC just went out. And most of the time, it's a pretty simple fix if you know how to fix it. So I'm really going to look into this whole new design that they've done here. I, I didn't, I've never seen, I don't think I've seen any other flight controller do the ESC part without a FET driver. So I'm really curious to know how they executed that. So I'll probably be trying to figure that out soon. Um, and maybe make an update video on it if you guys are interested. Let me know if you guys would be down in the comment section. And well, that's it, guys. I just really wanted to do this little brief breakdown video because I just got it and just thought it was kind of interesting. And well, that's it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.